If you're building a no-code app with Bubble.io, sooner or later you'll discover that although you can build a lot of things based on the core product, there are some things you can't do. And one of those is generating amazing graphics that your users could then share, like maybe uh, generating something that is bespoke to them that they can share on their social media, sort of gamification or a badge, something like that, uh, or generating like a high quality PDF. Effectively, what you're looking for is a Canva API. Uh, and that's why I was really excited when the team over at Orshot uh, reached out. If you've been searching for a Canva API, then Orshot is your answer. You just got to have a look at some of their really high quality templates to, to feel at home. If you feel at home in Canva, you're going to feel at home in Orshot. And then of course, the amazing thing that you can do is that anything in the image, uh, we take like this tweet image here. In fact, I'll just click through view template. Um, Anything in here can be dynamically filled through uh, an API call, and that's exactly what I'm going to demonstrate. We'll be using the Bubble API connector and sending data through, but first, we're gonna set up our own template. I'm gonna start with a blank template. Here we go, and let's start adding in some shapes. Uh, so I'm just gonna go for a circle. I'm gonna place it uh, in the middle of my canvas. See, we've got, you just got everything that you expect from a, a web, um, well, basically like a, a Canva equivalent. Uh, let's add in our text, drag it down. Um, and I'm just gonna have uh, in here, I'd have a first name and I'm gonna center it. And then uh, let's upload uh, the Planet No Code logo. There we go. Uh, and uh, actually I'm gonna make that center instead. Because what I'm thinking is kind of along the lines of gamification, if someone in my app has reached a particular milestone, I want to show them something that looks great. And obviously I could spend another half hour uh, designing this. Um, but uh, then I'd want them to be able to really easily share that on their social media. I'm also gonna add in an, an image because what I want to demonstrate is that you can basically create your own uh, API call by saying these are the bits of your template you want to swap either data or, or an image into. So if I go ahead and image and then unsplash, I'm gonna search for a profile picture. It's so good that there's an unsplash integration. Uh, let's just pick this guy. Perfect, uh, and then let's uh, say border radius. I'm just gonna, I want it round, so I'm gonna put a really high value in there. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, we'll just, uh, that's, not looking, that's not looking amazing, but something, something like that. Yeah, I think you get the idea. Um, so then I need to go ahead and I'm gonna save changes. And then I must, if I scroll down in the right-hand panel, uh, it's got a parameterize, parameterize, uh, cool term. Um, and I'm just gonna toggle that on and I'm gonna rename this to uh, profile image. Uh, there we go, I'll probably name it like that. And then I'm going to do exactly the same here and say first name. And I'm gonna click save. And now this is where it gets exciting because you can see that my template has got two parameters. Uh, and so I'm gonna click through to the REST API, but just gonna pause for a moment here. You might not be building with Bubble, but if you're building with N810, Zapier, uh, even, even uh, MCP server, I will just say that uh, the team have been incredibly responsive. I made one request uh, that would make it easier to record this demo so that uh, it's just easier to copy and paste into the Bubble API connector and they literally got back within an hour and that change was pushed. Uh, so that just gives you a sense of why uh, they've got an MCP server. It's just ready to go. Uh, so I could imagine you could set that up as some sort of agent in NA10. Yeah, the potential is basically unlimited, but we want REST API. Uh, so I'm gonna click through and then uh, we can either play around with it. So we have got all of these different values that we can change. Uh, so for example, if I wanted to get it back as a PDF, I could change that. And then if you're just getting to grips with uh, making API calls using JSON, this is so helpful because it updates the REST API, which is what we're gonna copy in just a moment into the Bubble API connector. It just does that for you. But uh, we're gonna go with a uh, PNG and then we're gonna go for it as a URL. 
Uh, and then if I now go over to REST, we're going to take this and we're going to translate it into the Bubble API connector. So if you've not already got it installed, uh, you would go add plugins and you'd search for the API connector. And just as a recap, you can see this lets you connect to thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of services out there, web scraping, the whole lot. But we're, of course, using AllShot. Uh, and so I'm going to go ahead and say AllShot. Uh, and then we basically have to match up what is presented here with uh, the fields in the Bubble API connector. And I'm going to take you through each one. So we have got an endpoint. I'm going to copy that. And we've also got a method, which is post. Just going to remember that. We then also notice that we authenticate in the header of our call. So in Bubble, I say private key and header. It's really important. Basically, if you run uh, API calls in front-end workflows, you should consider all of the data to be accessible to your user unless you explicitly state otherwise. Um, now, that's not usually a problem most of the time because data such as their profile uh, image and their first name, which is data that we'll be sending over to AllShot, uh, you know, that's their data. We don't need to hide that from them. But your API key, yes, you do want to hide it from them because you don't want them to then be using up your uh, your tokens on any external service, whether that's AllShot or say something like OpenAI. Um, so let's go down here and I'm going to say uh, generate uh, sharing badge and then change this to post. Uh, paste in the endpoint, which I've saved to my clipboard here. I'm changing this to action because I want a button to be clicked and this to be an action in a workflow. Uh, then if we go back to the uh, AllShot um, API, uh, we've got to add in the authorization. So that's bearer and then our API key. And you would get that from the API key section uh, in your AllShot account. So in here, I write bearer and I paste in my API key. I then have to fill in the JSON body. If you don't see JSON body, make sure you've selected post here. Uh, so if we go back to AllShot, uh, we've got this bit. So you want to select everything that is inside body inside of the regular brackets. So including the curly brackets, but not the regular brackets. I'm going to copy that. And you'll see that this is all of the key information that's required. Some of it we're going to change, some of it we're going to leave. Like we will leave the template ID, but of course you could still make that dynamic. You could have multiple different templates and you could decide which template to uh, request uh, in your bubble app. Uh, but we're going to just be changing uh, the um, first name and the profile image. So I'm going to copy that and paste it in. And then we have to say using triangle brackets, because that's the particular syntax Bubble wants us to use in this part of the API connector, uh, to create our merge fields or our dynamic data. So notice that I'm removing the speech marks. That's because there is a step that we will add into the workflow called make it, J uh, where you change text and you make it JSON safe. That's because JSON is very sensitive that you don't, you don't want it to break if your user puts a speech mark or puts a colon into the text that they send through. I know that wouldn't appear in first name, but it's just better to protect against it. So JSON saving is going to escape or make safe any special characters, but it also wraps the whole text string in speech marks. So we don't need to have the speech marks there. I'm just going to write first name. And then if I click out of the field, well, you can see that Bubble now gives me uh, this new field down here. I untick it from private because this is not being hidden from my user who's clicked this button. Uh, I'm then going to do exactly the same thing here, but I'm going to uh, copy this to my clipboard because I need it to run as a demo. Uh, and then I'm going to write profile image. Now, my next step in the Bubble API connector is to initialize the call. And this is our way of teaching Bubble. Uh, firstly, has everything that we've set up here, is it all correct? If not, we'll get an error and we'll debug it. But it's also teaching Bubble the sort of response it's going to get back. Uh, so I'm going to put in here first name, Matt, and then uh, profile image. I'm going to paste back in that unsplash image uh, that the uh, the unsplash image library gave and we used in our template. Um, so now I'm going to initialize the call. And I might, might have spotted one thing that's not going to work, but let's just try it. Initialize call. Okay, I've got an error. Let's debug that. 
Now, actually, I think it's because I've added in too many extra curly braces. So uh, if in doubt, you can always copy and paste what you've got here. If you just Google JSON validator, you'd find the tool which tells you if you've made a mistake in your JSON syntax. Just be aware that by pasting in the triangle brackets, uh, that is going to cause an error in a JSON validator. So look away from the triangle brackets and just check everything else is correct. Now, let's try it again. This is good, we're getting a wait and a delay, uh, and we are now getting back our image in base64. Uh, now, I think, just for simplicity's sake, in bubble, uh, I'm actually going to go ahead and, uh, if I go back here, not base64 URL. Cool. Uh, so I'm going to swap in URL instead. Now, if you're wondering why I'd swapped it to URL earlier and it had gone back to base64, that's because I had gone to my API key page and come back. Uh, so that's why I'd lost that small change that I'd done. Um, now we can go back uh, to the bubble app and reinitialize the call. And we get back this location. And I'm going to mark content as image because that's just going to mean that within bubble it understands it's an image now it's not saved to bubble you'll notice that the storage location is in or shot um, but i'm going to show you how we quickly set up a page in bubble that generates uh, and gets a response back for this image and we'll then save the image so now we've got the api connect set up let's go ahead and did i create a page for this no let's, let's create a new page or shot and I'm not going to spend time designing this. I'm even going to use fixed layout. Of course, if you're designing a page and you want it to be responsive or just generally good design, you would be using rows or columns instead. But uh, it's nice and quick for me just to drag a button on. And then I'm going to drag on a uh, input. And so this is going to be first name. And I'm going to say that it shouldn't be empty. And then uh, this is going to be uh, the uh, profile image. And I'm also going to have this as text because I'm simply just going to fetch a different image from Unsplash so you can see that it is indeed swapping in. We'll then call this uh, generate uh, image. Wait, let's be more specific. Generate dynamic image with or shot. And now we need some way of showing it back. So I'm going to add in an image. OK, so first of all, I'm going to save the location of the image, that all shot URL. I'm going to save it as a custom state. Custom states are not saving it to the database, so we're not even able to retrieve this image again, the location of it, if we refresh the page. It's basically a variable that's stored on the page. It's temporary, perfect for this. You can create a custom state on any element. I tend to create them on the page itself. Otherwise, I forget where I've put them. Uh, so I'm going to say uh, 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 image from or shot. And I'm going to say that this is an image. So now what I can do is add in a workflow. And I'm going to say, type in or shot. And this is exactly what I've called it in the API connector. If you don't see it here, it's because either you've not initialized it, either you've got this set as data, not action, it should be action, uh, or you've named it something different. Um, that's why you might not see it. Let's go back to the workflow. And now we're going to link up our field. So we'll take our first name field. And of course, you could retrieve this data straight from the database. I'm just taking it from a field on the page. And this is the bit I mentioned earlier. We're going to format as JSON safe. It's adding back in those speech marks at the start and end of the string. And it is also making sure that any special characters, a punctuation that could cause an issue with JSON syntax, which is, to be honest, the most common error we get when using the API connector. Uh, it's making sure that that is escaped, which is the coding term for making it safe. Um, I'm then going to uh, link this to the, um, what did I call it? Profile image. And I'm going to JSON safe that. OK, now I uh, will say set state because it bubble's going to run step one and it's going to wait until we get that response in the structure that we just initialized in the bubble API connector. Uh, and then I'm going to say, here's my custom state. And I'm going to say the result of 
uh, step one's content, and it should just all match up because I've said that the URL that comes back from all shot should be treated like an image. Images and bubble are just URL locations, whether they're external, like hosted on all shot servers, or they're uh, hosted in your bubble uh, app data. Um, and so that's gone blue, that's all working. Now let's uh, preview it and give it a test. So that I can demo that it's dynamically inserting in a new image, I've just gone to Unsplash, found a different one, and I'm gonna copy the image address. Let's try something different. Uh, we'll say Kate. Here's that uh, image address, and we'll say generate dynamic image with Orshot. And so now our bubble app is sending that data to Orshot. It's waiting for a response. Ah, ah, I've just noticed I have actually missed out something rather crucial, which is that uh, we haven't said the we haven't told the image element what image to show. Uh, so I'm going to go to my custom state, which is my page image. That's it. Now I think we can test it. So once more, we'll go Kate. Generate image with or shot. And there we go. We get Kate's name and we get Kate's image. So I'm not a natural designer, but I do think it is worth, for that reason, highlighting some of the templates that Orshot have made available. And also just a reminder that you can basically take a design that you found anywhere on the web and you can uh, upload it to their AI and their AI will rebuild that as a template in Orshot itself. If I go back to my design here, other things that you can change, well, you can get back JPEGs, you can get back PDFs, you can add in a file name. Uh, there's even a dynamic URL feature. I, I wouldn't necessarily recommend that, recommend that with Bubble. I would be using the REST API because it's just really solid. If we go into the tweet template that they provide, you can see just how much you can make variable. You've got these Boolean values hiding different parts on the image. I mean, the frankly, this is one of the best and most user-friendly APIs, uh, you know, API playgrounds that I've seen because it's all laid out for you here. And you can test it, you can run it, you can then take this and you can see just because there are more things that are dynamic and you would paste that into your Bubble API connector and you'd have it up and running in just a few minutes. So if you wanna try out Orshot, we've got a link down in the description to help you get started.